Welcome to the Road Back and Coles! In the last video, we left Seligman after having lunch at the Snowcap and visiting some antique and gift shops along Route 66. Now we're heading westbound for a few more stops before settling down for the night in Kingman, Arizona. We were thrilled to share with our family the unique Burma Shave signs that can only be found on this stretch of Route 66. These quirky signs feature a poem that is spaced out every 100 feet, making it easy for passing drivers to read. This one read, Listen birds, these signs cost money, so roost a while, but don't get funny. It's a fun reminder of the past in the brand Burma Shave, which sold brushless shaving cream from 1925 to 1966. Our next stop between Seligman and Peach Springs is a must see. Before heading to the caverns, make sure to check out the Small Free Museum. It's a great place to explore and learn about the past, especially for younger generations who may not be familiar with some of the items on display. There you go. Flashback. I remember that. It's a free walkthrough museum. What is that, Leo? Oh, it's a camera. It's an old fashioned Ooh. camera. Which one? This one? Yeah. No, the thing over the back. This? Yeah, that's a camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's broken. It's broken. It's broken. Don't get it. Don't get it. Oh, it's an old Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. It's broken. Oh, take a photo. I'm not allowed to touch anything. <laughs> hey, what's this, Leah? Oh, this is one of those vacuum cleaners. I was going to say vacuum. Yep. But I don't even clean the house and I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> is a radio uh, call thing for the army. Oh, so. The phone, yeah, yeah, they carry the phone in the press, army. Uh, you press. Yeah. It's just a short drive to the cabins. They have dinosaurs displayed along the road. Tickets are $24.95 adults, seniors $21.95 and kids $15.95 and six and below are free. If you really want, you can even spend the night down in the caverns. Forty-five minutes to an hour. While we are downstairs, I gotta ask you not to touch any natural walls or formations. I can only take ten people at the most per elevator trip, so I can only go ahead and take half the group. Now I'm back in another two minutes for everybody else. How many you got? Five. Five. Six, seven. Oh, I'm doing it. You alright? Okay. How about another two minutes? So, we're currently descending 210 feet, 21 stories, or 64 meters. It took about two years and 90 cases of dynamite to blast the elevator shaft from top to bottom. It then took an additional year in 1962 to install the elevator with cables, lighting, counterweights, everything to make this work. And then I'll need you folks to wait right around the corner on those red benches. I'll be back in another two or so minutes with hopefully everybody else. Oh, this is a bit Yeah. Well, we can take the tour. We know where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to take the lead. Yeah. Oh, You're going to show us the ghost. We're start by going this way, guys. You're going to show us the ghost. I like this. Oh, wow. I like the cake. I like the cake. You like the cake? Yeah. Yeah? yeah you can see them if you look. You can, yeah, you can look up there. You can see the elevator from they're like kind of to the left, straight up. Oh, yeah. This wide. Yeah, there's like a rickety, like, wooden yeah. staircase. Would it be fun to climb up? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, you look to the left, like up there. It would be like you're going oh, one God, person really? at a time. Is the platform made to stop? <laughs> when was it? Where were you? Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. You can feel the air move. Oh, you can Ah! <laughs> oh, that's the underground! Uh, <laughs> scary! Okay, this is one, this one, guys. Oh, look at look! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the concrete trail we're walking on is from 1958 underground in the middle of nowhere, implying nobody 
basically cared enough to use any building codes. The trail is very uneven. Take your time, mind your step, and mind your head should you be on the tall side, especially right down through here. So, mm -hmm. this cavern was discovered back in 1927 by a man named Walter Peck. He was a local cowboy on his way to a poker game, and on his way there it did start to rain quite heavily. Walter Peck decided to stop by a tree, tie his horse up, and wait most of the storm out. But while he's there waiting, he's noticed that there's a large hole in the ground. Rainwater from the storm is flowing into it constantly, and it looks like it's bottomless. The water just disappears. He's wondering where all the water is going. So with nothing better to do, the next day, he came back over with his older brother, Miles, and that's when he had the idea, you're the one that found it, you're going inside. He tied a rope around Walter Peck's waist, gave him a handful of matches, and pushed Walter down the hole. While Walter Peck was in the cavern, he thought that he had just hit the jackpot, finding gold all over the ceilings, all the orange. He didn't stop at gold. He also thought that he found silver ore, all the gray stuff, and even diamonds, just these sparkly rocks. Yeah. You can already tell that's not exactly what he found. I'll tell you what he did find in just a moment. We gotta get out of the small natural room and into one of the main chambers. Getting there, we're going through a 15 foot long man-made tunnel. Low ceiling and 15 uneven stairs, height and size. So mind your step, mind your head, right here. So, the room that we have just entered, this is known as the Chapel of the Ages, called this for two reasons. The first being this cathedral-like shape from Astra, which is natural. Second reason would be that we've had like 14 or so weddings down here, so the names just kind of worked. He dug the hole about 20 feet down and then realized that's just limestone. Where's all the gold he saw? He's now freaking out, so he took a core sample and had that sent down to a geologist down in Prescott, Arizona, over 100 miles south of here. Turns out that silver he had is nothing more than a low-graded tin called considerite. <laughs> it's such a low-graded tin, it is considered worthless today as well as back then. The diamonds are selenite crystal, a form of gypsum. Selenite crystal typically resembles frost or snow, and when you touch it, those tiny crystal flakes tend to disintegrate into sparkly dust. It's the opposite of a diamond, typically worthless. And finally, his gold. <laughs> All that orange you see through the cave, that is rust or iron oxide. That's true. With a cave full of actual rust and now broken dreams, Walter Peck is broke. How's he gonna make money, he's thinking. And then he decided to open up tours. For 25 cents, he'll tie a rope around your waist, push you down the hole with a lantern. <laughs> and then you're down here by yourself. Which you gotta pay double to get back. But if you're stranded in the cave, at least there's a hotel room called the Cavern Suite. It has two queen-sized beds, a couch, a TV, and a small RV-type restroom. The uh, water tanks are on wheels, so that's how we get water in and out. Otherwise, it'd be messy down here. If you stay the night down here and you feel lonely to keep you company, that there is the guard dog, Rocky. That is what happened when a tour guide got bored. Yeah, they dug at rocks. Mm -hmm. Opposite side of the No, it wasn't. Two waterways, left and right. Here. The very first wedding on this concrete stage was back in April of 1977. A girl that used to work in the gift shop fell in love with a cook in the kitchen. And when their friends and family asked why in the heck they want to get married in a cave, well, they told them they want to start the marriage off on a rock-solid foundation. <laughs> Certainly a bad pun. However, the theory has worked. They are still married and live down in Phoenix. From the first wedding, we still have the veil. And weddings since have left us with a bouquet to remember them by. <laughs> we keep all these here to prove to you there are people crazy enough to get married in a cave in the middle of nowhere. The right. reason for the man-made tunnel, that's because that's the mm. alternate route. That's the original route. 110 foot cliff with a steep staircase. It said that the second owners got so tired of having to climb up this way just to climb back down, they just wanted to do it once going downward. So they made the tunnel as a bypass. We're going up three individual hills to get up to the top of that. We'll revisit the staircase in another 20 minutes. At that point, we're coming down. Until then, just take your time, mind your step, and slide your head through the tunnel. The tunnel took two years and 40 cases of dynamite to blast out from top to bottom. And most of the rubble is still down here, looking just like this all throughout the cave. Oh. How's that walk? Who's on here with this? Oh, you want a spot here? Oh. I'll get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> They're all dying. I'm gonna walk up.
That's the same as bitch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This walked up that steep hill. This fallout shelter was supposed to last 2,000 people for two weeks. But where are you going to get those 2,000 people in the middle of nowhere? Well, to either side of us, there are two towns, one being Seligman, the other one Peach Springs, 10 and 20 miles away. So there are the people, and here's the food for them. Should nuclear war actually happen at that point, this is where they would all come to get away from the nuclear fallout. All these supplies were meant to last 2,000 people for two weeks straight, starting with smaller boxes over there, uh, over there with those two small, those two tin cans. <laughs> one tin can full of hard candies, the other one full of crackers. Barrels of water, medical boxes, or medical kits in the large boxes, and these are sanitation kits, cardboard buckets that we need to take off the lake and find a toilet seat, and only one to two rolls of toilet paper per barrel. All to last 2,000 people, hopefully for two weeks. As you make your way down the hill, we find your step. We have strips and strips tape through here. Some friends. So, the giant hole in the ground, this here is known as the mystery room. The mystery being just how large is this cavern at the moment? Uh, you got me, it's still being explored. Once every two to three months, we get a group of cave explorers up from Phoenix called the Central Arizona Grotto. Those cave explorers are typically funded by the National Geological Society and ASU down in Phoenix. While they're here, they go down there. That's easily a hundred feet deeper than where the elevator stopped at 318 feet underground, almost 32 stories down. <laughs> Here, of course, is our mummified bobcat. Because he's a bobcat, of course, the owners named him Bob, because, you know, why not? This guy fell through the original natural entrance a little further away. We'll see that shortly. He fell through the entrance over 172 years ago, back in 1850, and they determined that time frame by taking a back leg to Phoenix and having it tested there. So you'll find this bobcat only has three legs left, two front and one back. They named this guy Robert. He's from eBay. He's there to show you Bob, well, what he was supposed to look like before he dried up. He's also there to show you can get like anything off of eBay. Took around three days to get it all stocked at the time. Uh, back in the 1960s, they were using the National Guard to supply it all. Like I mentioned earlier, Walter Peck is effectively tying this rope around your waist, having you pay 25 cents to do so, and then he gives you a kerosene lantern, dumps you down the hole, and you're left to your own devices. If you make it back in time, you go back to the surface on the rope. If you're back to the rope after five o'clock, you're now stranded as Walter Peck has left you overnight. Now this happened multiple times, almost 10 years straight. 1936 came around and nobody's taken the tour anymore. Walter Peck is now realizing he's messed up. It's all because of that rope, isn't it? If he had something a little more permanent way in and out, well, there'd be no problem, except he had no idea how to make this happen. Fortunately for Walter Peck, 1936, right next door, the Hoover Dam is finished being built ahead of time and under budget. Well, this means that now in the 1930s Great Depression era, thousands of workers are now out of a job, legitimately almost overnight. Now, in order to help alleviate that situation, the government used the remaining funds from the dam's construction to make a new job the Civilian Conservation Corps, and that saw to it that those construction workers were sent around the country helping out with construction projects, including here. It turns out they used a bunch of the wooden scaffolding to help Walter Peck. They built a suspension bridge of all things in a cave underground. It connects the natural entrance in the ceiling to the floor. All the while, each step you take, the whole thing bounces up and down. It's quite disconcerting. <laughs> After that, you're up in the ceiling right there, and then it's another 60 feet of wooden stairs zigzagging to the surface. It may not be the easiest way in or out, but now you don't have to worry that Walter Peck is going to strand you overnight. You can get in and out whenever you want. Only thing is, Walter Peck is now up the price in the Great Depression to 50 cents a person and took away the lantern. You have to bring your own. By the time he <laughs> sold the cave, it would have been somewhere around 1954, and the price is now around a dollar a person. Still no lantern. 1958, the second owners are clearing this area, carving the trail into the side of the cliff. While removing tons of debris from that area there, it turns out they uncovered 94% of that thing's skeleton. 
They initially thought hot dog, we found a dinosaur. So they came from the 50s to the 80s. This was called dinosaur caverns. This is why the old statues and the giant skull. They wanted to know, well, is that a T-Rex? So they sent the remains down to Tucson to the University of Arizona. It was down in Tucson that they discovered it's not a dinosaur, it's a prehistoric sloth. They named this giant prehistoric four-toed ground sloth, Gertie. Now, this prehistoric sloth used to stand approximately 15 feet tall. They estimate at the most two tons, half the size of a woolly mammoth. Much like that bobcat, she took a nasty tumble down this hole in the ceiling. They estimate the bones were about 15 to 20,000 years ago. So she's definitely prehistoric. She's got a lot of meat and a lot of fat on her bones. So when she hit the ground, instead of facing a paralyzing injury, she just cracked a couple of ribs, they estimate at the most. Unlike the bobcat, she could still move almost perfectly fine. And she knew where she came from as she tried to climb upwards, leaving scratches and claw marks on the walls here, scratches up there. And guess what? Even one of that scratches right up there. The as long as you. Really? Yeah. We had a great time during our visit to the Grand Canyon Caverns. Our tour guide, David, was informative, easy to understand, and fun. I think everyone left with a positive impression of the tour. You can even plan to have a meal down here at the Caverns Grotto. It's $70 a person with bottomless soft drink. It's pretty cool. The staircase that you actually climb is similar to a fire escape you'd find on an older apartment building. Same thing zigzagging up, which is why we got the elevator. So just like before, I'll go ahead and take the first group up now. I'll be back about two minutes for everybody else. Okay, use the first two. I'm first. I'm first. I'm first. I'm So I think that's it when... That's it. Oh, Hold it. Hold it. Bye. 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 We're still here. We're locked away. Yeah. Hey. It's good that everyone else got their experience. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, when we get back up to the surface on the right side of the elevator, you'll find a large glass case with four windows on it. That large case has a bunch of items that people have dropped in the cave over years and years of tours. Some things are interesting, like flash bulbs, flash cubes from older cameras, some of the cameras that go to them, a glass Coca-Cola bottle from before the 1930s, no design on it. Other things in the case make a little less sense how it even got down there. Next to the large case, on its left, there is a shorter case with a claw from the sloth. Picture of the bones, picture of the first weddings, and one small picture of Walter Peck, first man we know of, downstairs. Next to that, there is a table with a guest book. Feel free to sign that if you'd like. Good and bad comments are welcome. Good comments, keep in mind, my name is David. Bad <laughs> comments, Walter Peck definitely would have left you all down there, so it could have been like way worse. It's going to be one more bump at the top. Oh! <laughs> we have arrived. Thank you, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, thanks for coming. Oh, so this is all the stuff that got lost yeah, down there. Kodak. Huh. Where is it? The old Kodak. Cameras. Yeah. What the heck oh, is that thing? Sweet. That was like something from um, okay. Alien, yeah. Alien vs Predator. Um, I was talking about before. What was the spacecraft we went with? It's a flower. <clears throat> a woody hat. Yeah, someone lost their hat. <laughs> I want to ride. <laughs> Sloth claw. Hmm. It's uh, its relatives are the tree sloth, the anteater, and the armadillo. Is that actually a toy? Or if someone just put our speedboat out there? And then what the heck is Sinead on? Okay, so we finished our Grand Canyon cabin tour. Everyone loved it, it was awesome. It was my second time, Dylan, our second time going down. We were here back in 2020 and um, we enjoyed it and we enjoyed it again, visiting it again.
We are passing through the little town of Peach Springs, a couple of abandoned Route 66 buildings to be seen here. Passing through another little town called Thruxton, which has a gas station with a giant Route 66 sign. So we made it to Hackberry General Store. Uh, unfortunately, it's closed, but uh, we still enjoy it from the outside. It's pretty cool. There's heaps of cool photo opportunities on the outside. It's the outhouse from Shrek. The outhouse from Shrek? Well, at least it looks like. It does look like the outhouse from Shrek. Get out of my swamp! <laughs> Did you say someone's No. Oh. <laughs> The family had a great old time exploring the Hackberry General Store and its old classic cars. Just a short drive down the road and we are at the gigantic Hedicus. There are some great photo opportunities here as well. Making our way now to Kingman to check out the Route 66 Mr D's Diner. Back. Back, yeah. Who's going to take the Monster Burger Challenge? <laughs> oh, go! Quick, go. run! Welcome to Mr. D's! Cool old school diner. Are there any space aliens in here? It's not Australians. Any space aliens in here? Space aliens? No, just Australians. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We had a delicious family dinner at Mr. D's Diner. Ronnie and Sean both ordered the Monster Burger. Dylan and I shared it since we've had it before. Charlene got a pineapple chicken dish. Shanae and my mum, Sandra, each got a pizza. My dad, Ron, got the fried chicken gravy steak. Dylan's dad, Robert, and Aiden both got the Harley hot dog. Ryan and Corey got chicken strips and fries, and Leah ordered spaghetti bolognese and a salad. Is it nice? Yes, ranch is so good. Oh, I see. Let me have a taste. Is it spicy? <sighs> really? I had the the sausage or the sauce? The sauce. Let me try. It's jalapeno sauce. Oh, that's spicy sauce. I don't like it. Did you, did you read on the menu? Did it say on the menu? Yeah, it's spicy. Maybe wipe some of it off. It's jalapeno yeah, sauce. It is so spicy. Okay, I like it. You might want to ask for a refund on that one. I like it. Do you like it? Yeah. No, it doesn't say anything. Oh, it just says a special Route 66 sauce. I like it. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Got it. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, it's awesome. Pineapple chicken. Wow, it looks pretty cool. Oh my god, I have a little bit of that. It's not that spicy. Are you Slide them over here. Yep. Oh. Just because that black oh. is a little hot, so just be careful there, okay? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, let me in there. Nice yeah, you can take that back. <laughs> 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 I don't want my friend to say, I put my mouth on the table. You were great in that choice. No, I actually kind of like it. Can I have a bite? You're just saying that, I reckon. Are you sure? Yeah, look, you just. Your mouth is going to go on a Mexican trip. Come on, eh? We have one good cheeseburger. I think that's a meal! Hey, you said you didn't pick it. I don't know what's that, Mika. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm serious. You can't really count on the photo. What the hell? It's got a pickle on top of it. Hey, look at how many fries you got. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Wait, Good luck, good luck. You're American, you got to eat like That's not a photo of anybody. Found it. What do you think, Junior? I'll be able to pick it up. Your head. <laughs> oh my God. Like put it up in front of your face. Yeah. 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 Y